34-year-old Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez is now the WBC Diamond Champion at 115 pounds. That doesn't mean a whole lot. The belts these days are practically worthless. It's all about who is perceived as the man and who is having the meaningful fights. Well, Gonzalez has just added another meaningful win onto his already incredible career. The younger, fresher, unbeaten man couldn't do anything in there. There was an element of immaturity with Martinez's performance. He was banging his gloves together, almost seemed to be welcoming the headshots at times, like a, a mini Ricardo Mayorga. That wasn't helping his cause at all. He was getting backed up. He was too upright and close as I thought he might be. He seemed to have no respect for the left hook that was coming his way and probably hurting. It really was one-way traffic. The clever bursts that usually got him out of trouble when he lets both arms flare and then he comes in at both sides with quick hooks, they really didn't bother Chocolatito. This fight was a prime example of how it's Chocolatito's defense that keeps him at the level he's fighting at, that separates him from the herd. He forces you into this very physical taxing fight, but then he's so good with the arms, with the shoulders, the chin's always tucked, and we forget he does have a reverse gear. He will back up to take the sting out of certain attacks and then get right back in your face. He's so comfortable up close that it's got to be very dispiriting when you load up like Martinez was doing and maybe one of them gets through, he easily eats it, the rest are deflected and then I'm pushing you back again. You've got just as much of a technical quandre as you do a physical one. But the simple fact that Chocolatito was the bigger man that he is quite a broad five foot three, as I said in my prediction video. It only made it tougher for Martinez. He couldn't compete physically. We saw him giving ground, being frustrated, trying to mentally reset, and credit to him, trying to come up with some clever combinations that usually work. But Chocolatito just knew well too much. And I don't even think this was a prime Choco. Not really close to it. If there was one thing in the performance that I thought was kind of lacking, it was the work rate. Chocolatito usually has this face-melting work rate that perhaps five, six years ago would have got the stoppage. But um, while he had, of course, his classic bursts, he seemed to be more content with just seeing what Martinez had while keeping going with a, a more pedestrian work rate by his own standards. It was power that was the slight worry for Chocolatito fans. We know El Rey can crack, that he's got that unorthodox delivery, but Chocolatito with his defence made it look basic. He saw it all coming. And when the odd one did get through, you can see this man just does not have the power of a Rung Versailles. Not that surprising. Rung Versailles is a bigger man, bigger boned, and it was no problem for Choco. There really didn't seem to be many marks on his face at all after the fight had ended. There were unanimous scores, one of them 116-112, far too close. There's no way you could have given Martinez four rounds, maybe two. And in those two, it really would have been like a share of a round because he never stomped any kind of authority on that fight. He was always trying to swim against a stronger current. It was not working he did very well to last the distance, and I guess you could say, depending on what he does in his career from now on, will determine the true worth of this victory. But it's certainly not a case of being exposed. We knew that he simply didn't have the experience of Choco, and I don't think he took too much of a beating, so it shouldn't have completely derailed his career either. Sounds like Eddie Hearn has already, rightfully, ruled out the idea of going up to bantamweight. We know Chocolatito is already at his ceiling here. He's usually the smaller guy at 115. Remember, Martinez was coming up. It was the first time Choco's fought somebody shorter than himself in something like eight years. So I say stay at 115. We've still got a lot of names there. Any delusions of grandeur about fighting in a way the monster are just that. He might even be about to leave 118 himself. He's very strong. He's naturally bigger. He hits oh so hard though that did look like a super fight about six years ago that boat has definitely sailed the real question is just where do we put chocolatito now in the top 10 pound for pound a guy who used to be number one 
He got badly knocked out by Rung Versailles. Loads of people took that as a cue to say, I told you he was overrated the whole time. Well, look at the way he's reapplied himself now. And he is building an incredible resume overall, if we're talking all-time greats. Not long ago, I did a video about, say, the top three or five fighters who have got the best resumes in boxing today. Now that Manny Pacquiao has officially retired, you could definitely put Chocolatito at the top. I'd say it's between him and Donair, who were both simultaneously having this incredible twilight period of their careers. This Indian summer just keeps going and going. It's not quite as dominating as it used to be. It's not quite as dynamic, but it's still 75% Chocolatito. He's still got unfinished business with Rung Versailles if he still wants to go down that route. There is, of course, the third fight with El Gallo Estrada. If either of them happen, the one thing I really pray for is that, of course, Roman Gonzalez eventually gets paid a million dollars.